They begged me not to investigate. If you think that CoffeeZilla is going to be able to do a goddamn thing, he's not going to be able to. But now I've uncovered millions of dollars stolen. Please don't believe this horse shit that are coming out of people's mouths that I've stolen money from you. And the scammer's biggest supporters are now against him. If he's run scams in the past, he's run more scams. He's a scammer. He's a, he's a scammer. It's, it looks okay. like a scam, yeah. Even his family says he needs to go to jail. The one good thing that might come out of it, if he does go to prison and, you know, maybe he can just sit there and think about what he's actually doing. This is the story of Brian King Legend, a new breed of scammer you may not have heard of, but you should know about. But before we confront him with evidence, let's start at the beginning. I first remember hearing about Brian about a year ago when I was looking for new scammers on the come up. People told me he was selling a new coin called Seifu, which advertised 382,000% APY. His website bragged you could become a millionaire in one year if you invested $1,000. I thought this was an obvious scam, but when I realized it wasn't Brian Legend's first attempt, I decided to dig more. Turns out he had run several crypto scams in his past, and so I decided to make a video warning people about the new scam Seifu to stop it before it was too late. But I failed. What do you mean you failed? You already made a video. What more can you do? Why go back now? A hundred thousand people invested, Max. They got hurt. Well, you can't help people who don't help themselves, Coffee. If they didn't listen to you the first time... <laughs> then I tell them again. As many times as it takes. Human nature doesn't change. If you believe that, you wouldn't try to change my mind. Well, I just thought you might listen to reason. No, I can't this time. They pushed me too far on this. What? Who? When? Did they mention me? You? Why would they mention you? Uh, hello? New sidekick? Dr. Maxwell? <laughs> no, they didn't. And you aren't. Look, uh, just here. Check it out. I gotta go. I'm sorry. I'll be back. One of the idiots over there on the Crypto Leads uh, Discord keeps on putting up a CoffeeZilla thing, stirring people up. Let me explain something to you. Um, you f***ing idiots. If you think that CoffeeZilla is gonna be able to do a goddamn thing, he's not gonna be able to. I've already gone through this over and over and over and over and over and over again. Ah, Daniel, you glorious idiot. What did you do? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Last time, these are the basic allegations we uncovered. Previous history of scamming, unrealistic returns, a burn wallet scam. My video was brief last time because to me, this was all obviously too good to be true, but I was wrong. And this time, Brian Legend's gonna get the full colonoscopy. I talked to everyone for this video, from victims to supporters to family to Brian himself. And what I found out this time that I didn't know last year is that Brian Legend didn't start out with big scams or crypto at all. He built up to it, which I found out when I met his family. Irene Hayes, um, maiden name Sila. I am Brian's aunt, so he's my nephew, but kind of my brother because my parents who were his grandparents adopted him uh, when he was uh, four years old after his mother passed away so that's basically the the family relationship and of course john here is my son so he's brian's cousin cousin all right so the first thing we learned is brian legend wasn't born a legend he was born brian seiler his mother passed when he was young and he was soon adopted by his grandparents although something seemed different with brian almost immediately. He didn't have his real parents, but he grew up in a, you know, great, happy home, you know, with all the same values as what I grew up with. But, um, you know, just, he just didn't turn out to be that kind of man in the end. I've heard a few other rumors that like, he had some movie tickets scheme, and then he also <laughs> did like mail order, uh, like some mail order scam. Is that true? Can you tell me about that? 
I know for me, he got my eBay account disabled because he was scamming people from that, like selling stuff and then not actually sending it, just taking the money. And then all of a sudden I got a thing. Because I, I, this was- This a, is years was, ago. This is years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like 16 at the time. So I was just like, yeah, it's 20, you can borrow my, uh, my eBay account, that's fine. And then all of a sudden I get this thing saying, oh, you can't use it anymore. And I was like, what's going on? And yeah, apparently he was, I read through all the reviews and it was like, sending stuff uh, not getting sent the item and all this sort of thing and there's just like a hundred reviews and i was like what is going on i mean that was when the you know internet was basically first starting you know there was still we're still doing mail in those days but of course on the internet so he would sell movie tickets to people yeah you know and then never send them obviously so these people never you know got them and as john was saying i remember him trying to clean up coins saying they were you know from 1862 you know worth how many thousands of dollars and he'd send them but of course they weren't the real thing but he'd get the money <laughs> and that's all you know together with all this ebay and all of that yeah so he's been doing this is a long history of lying scamming yeah. people started small time and then uh, recently it's become huge i mean millions of dollars it's gotten bigger and bigger every time he starts a new venture obviously he's realized oh well i can get away with this much and then he tries obviously to do a little bit more a little bit more and he's been getting away with it constantly like a i guess a snowball effect isn't it brian's family is right things only grew from here and brian eventually found the crypto industry where his ambitions grew along with the money and allegations of him scamming people although of course he would say this is all fud and his family they're just jealous in fact, he says this is one reason he changed his name in the first place. My name is Brian Legend. I have no association at all with Brian Siler anymore. There was a lot of hate, not hatred, but I suppose a lot of jealousy from family members. Um, mainly one, and I suppose you can call it two, and, and, and a couple of others there. Um, and they were, they were getting a bit jealous about my fame, my success, um, and they really developed a lot of hatred in the end for me. And I, I really don't know why. Um, but at the end of the day, I decided, look, I need to separate myself away from family. Now, who should we believe about what happened here? Brian Legend or his jealous family? Well, let's look at some more evidence because this brings us all to Seifu. This was Brian's biggest project ever that would take him from $10 t-shirts to Louis Vuitton and supercars. But at the beginning, Brian claimed he didn't need the money. He already had it. He was just creating Seifu to reclaim his reputation from scammers himself. I'm actually making this project, okay? And I've released this project, not from a not from a financial gain perspective, which means that I'm not doing this for money, okay? I already have money, okay? I don't care about a million dollars. I don't care about $5 million. I don't, I don't care about money really, okay? I have money already. What I'm doing this for, me personally, is to try to build back my reputation from the last projects which got diminished and they got absolutely slaughtered by fudders um, in the game. And, you know, I suppose that you can call them kind of scammers because they're trying to scam you out of knowing the truth. Um, and they're trying to make you believe that I was some scammer myself or whatever. It's, it's untrue. So yeah, Brian claims he didn't need to scam anyone because he already had money. But not only that, he literally couldn't scam you according to him because firstly, the Seifu white paper said the team will not hold any tokens and the Seifu team cannot dump on you. Secondly, Brian said he wasn't taking a salary from Seifu until the blockchain was done. Now to this day, that blockchain hasn't come out. So according to that, he wouldn't have taken a salary. So if both of those things are true, no tokens and no salary, how could he have made money from Seifu? And how is it that his lifestyle changed so much then? Going from cheap shirts to luxury brands, from simple houses to mansions. Well, Brian's explanation is the same as before. He already had the money, which is what he said when I confronted him on this. So CoffeeZilla, as I just told, I was, what I was about to say, was that I have been a millionaire for quite some years before even attempting um, the Seifu, okay? Once again, we're left with the question, should we believe Brian or not? Was he secretly rich? Well, let's investigate. And our first piece of evidence here comes before Seifu. Brian had a public account flipping domains online called Brizy555, where he was doing deals just a couple years ago for a few dollars at a time. 
Now, it's hard to believe you would do this if you were already a millionaire. Brian also was known to have a low-budget cooking show that was copying epic mealtime called Angry Mealtime. Keep your meals angry and the taste delicious. Now, this evidence suggests that Brian didn't have money before Seifu, something that he disagrees with. Is that why you were domain flipping in 2020 for like three bucks? I own plenty of domains, thousands and thousands of domains. Yeah, um, so they're, they're... a few years ago, you run a cooking show where you're broke, then you run domain flipping where you're flipping for a few bucks. What and then all of a sudden you're wearing, regu you're re wearing regular shirts, you get in charge of Seifu and suddenly you have supercars in a mansion? That doesn't make so, a lot of sense. So what, so what I'd like to tell you is that Whatever I do on the side towards hobbies years ago, um, obviously, you know, people go through stints of what they, you know, feel like in the moment. And yeah, I attempted some some YouTube stuff, but that was all as a hobby, not to earn income from it. I never had ads on there or anything like that. That's right. These were hobbies, according to Brian. But I was confused why if he was rich before and was domain flipping as a hobby, why did he stop these hobbies after he had created Seifu and definitely was rich? Well, let's look at another piece of evidence, which actually comes from Brian's family. See, they say he wasn't a millionaire at the time because they knew him and he was broke. I talked to Brian and he told me that he was a millionaire before this. Is is, is that true that he didn't need this money? Uh, maybe in his mind, but mom, my mom's got right here money. He actually, she actually had to send him to stay off the streets in Queensland because he couldn't afford rent. So we actually gave him money because he used to, he put his, you know, all this, he used to hock all his stuff, you know, like with cash converters and all of that. So thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars we sent him, you know, so that we could, he could stay in his apartment and, you know, get his phone back and for food. If we didn't give him all this money, well, he wouldn't really be anywhere, basically. I don't think, you know. <laughs> so, sense. so he was almost homeless. I mean, he wasn't just like not very, like not rich. He was almost homeless if it wasn't wasn't for you guys. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got evidence, you know, transfers where who we gave money to and how much and everything. So, yeah. Now, all these pieces of evidence point in one direction. Brian was broke or at a minimum not rich before Seifu, which leads us to a very interesting mystery. Once again, how did Brian go from this to all of this if he had no salary, no tokens, and wasn't rich beforehand? With all of these discrepancies, I decided to look deeper into the blockchain to figure out how this might have happened. And when you go to the Seifu website, the only official wallets Brian had access to were the Seifu Insurance Fund and the Seifu Treasury. Now, both of these wallets claim to be used for specific Seifu-related purposes to achieve price stability, fund new investments, Seifu projects, and marketing for Seifu. But that is not actually what happened. See, take the Treasury wallet, for example. Brian claims he was using it for investments, like the Seifu blockchain. On April 25th, 2022, Brian said that he had taken a one-time withdrawal of 420000 and it satisfied all operational and development costs. Sounds great. But when we actually look at that wallet, a lot more money has been taken out. $5.77 million cashed out to Binance and Change Now, which is strange. Where did that missing $5 million go? Well, let's keep looking. A few months later, Brian used the treasury again to sell and said that all costs bills are now 100% allocated, which means there is no more selling from us. IMO, this now marks the low on current price. Of course, he was wrong on this. The price crashed horrifically from here. And how much had Brian withdrawn less than a year in? A staggering $17 million from the treasury. What kind of investments or expenses could possibly explain all this money other than maybe Brian stole some of it? Well, I wanted to look into it and it's true there were some extravagant spending. For example, take a diamond necklace with the Seifu logo on it. But the problem here is Brian claims he used his own funds to buy this thing. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, he said, just to prove the futters that he ain't rugging or running off at all. What a nice level-headed guy. Prove the futters wrong by spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on himself. So maybe the necklace doesn't explain all that spending, but maybe the Forbes article does. Or perhaps the award that Seifu won at the Dubai Crypto Expo for being the most innovative blockchain of 2022. 
which might seem weird until you realize this award was literally pay to win. For $75,000 of a sponsorship, you could buy an award from Crypto Expo Dubai in whatever category you wanted. In fact, that's how two crypto projects won the same award in Best DeFi and Best DeFi. The only difference between them being one had a hyphen in it. So my point with all of this is to say that Seifu did do some stupid extravagant spending. They even had a racing team. But none of this adds up to $17 million in operational costs in one year. Not even close. So once again, where did that extra money go? Even worse, Brian told everyone back in August that he had all the money he needs and won't be selling again, right? But that didn't actually last two months because Brian Legend quickly took out another $10 million from that account, totaling at this point $26 million in less than one year. So where did all this money go? It truly is a mystery, but maybe this picture holds some clues. But we can't stop there because that was just one wallet, the treasury. Remember that Brian had access to another wallet called the Seifu Insurance Fund. And before you ask, did he take money from that too? Yes, he did. Yes, 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 he did. He took millions from that wallet as well. And there's another wallet in play that we haven't even talked about yet, the fire pit. Now, the reason we haven't talked about this is because it was supposed to be untouchable. Nobody had the keys or password to this wallet. Brian insisted that he didn't control it. There's obviously been asked a few times um, if we do have keys to the wallet. So if we've got access to the wallet, the answer is no, categorically no. Brian's going to rug the fire pit. How many times have we f***ing heard that I'm going to rug this fire pit? How many times have we heard that? I, I, I would not, if you know what, if I... <laughs> and all the safe who influencers said, no, 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 that's not possible. He would never do this. For all of you who doubt um, Brian, and I know the Fudders had, were constantly, this was a point of contention. Brian's got 2.7 million sa Seifu in the fire pit that he can just rug on you guys. Just wait, guys. You'll see. You'll see. Well, I love those people. Dude, I was in I a Fuzz it. group this morning. Just like, you guys can't be serious, really. Brian doesn't have the keys to the wallet. There will never, ever, ever be anything that transfers out of the burn wallet ever. Well, that lasted up until December 27th, 2022, when Brian Legend said, Futters will have you believe that it was always my plan to rug the fire pit wallet by accessing the wallet. This is so far from the truth that the last 10 months have been nothing more than to prove this narrative is bogus. Having said the above, I will now admit to the last 10 months being a test of loyalty from your end and trust in my word of me not being some kind of scammer at all. Yes, the keys to the Seifu fire pit were in my possession all this time, and I have had full access to it, meaning if there was any ounce of truth to me being a scammer or me wanting to rug the project, well, it would have happened many months ago. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for trusting in me and not giving in to the futters with the likes of CoffeeZilla. What kind of mischievous villain says this? Think about the emotional whiplash of this for supporters. I mean, hey guys, I'm not a scammer. I don't have the keys. Then it's, hey guys, this is all a test. I had the keys. I did lie, but I didn't scam you. So you can trust me. Thank you for not trusting the Futters who were right. And look, this by itself would have been insane and enough to discredit Brian, but it doesn't stop there. Because Brian claimed in this post that all future money would be sent to the proper burn wallet. Only he changed his mind a little after this post. He said he was going to use the money for a new project idea of his. Only to then change his mind again, saying he was ashamed of himself. Saying, I feel it's immoral and irresponsible to use the fire pit. Only then to change his mind again and to use funds from the wallet he said he could never steal from taking the money that he said only moments ago he couldn't take and felt it was immoral to take. And look, the most fascinating detail in all of this that I haven't told you yet is the amount of money that was stolen in this fire pit was not significant. At least compared to the millions Brian stole from the treasury, this was like only $100,000 or so. It was peanuts, but this actually reveals so much about Brian. The fact that it wasn't a lot of money and that he couldn't resist taking it anyways, shows everything. I mean, this was Brian's big moment of coming out to own the Futters, you know, thank you for trusting in me and not giving in to CoffeeZilla, but then he does it anyways. At this point, 
I started to wonder if it's not something pathological with Brian. Like he can't help himself. If he can take the money, he will take the money. Because even he admits that the math on this doesn't make sense. Everything that I've worked really hard for over the last 18 months, just to what, scam a few hundred thousand dollars or a million or whatever it is, it doesn't make sense, okay? It does not make sense. Later, when I confronted Brian and asked him to explain stealing the money from the fire pit, his response got even crazier. No, you stole those funds. Those funds never went to Seifu Go. What do you mean stolen? How can it be stolen? I mean, you took them for your personal benefit. No, stealing is saying that you're stealing from someone else's possessions. The fact of the matter is- But if you declare, no, you declared the fire, you said, you, you lied. You said the fire pit couldn't be accessed. Then you changed the rules halfway through and you took the funds that should have been in the burn wallet, right? This burn wallet, and you took it for yourself. True or false? So as I've said to you, what you're saying, and you're trying to suggest to me that I somehow uh, stole funds. And I'm telling you, you cannot steal off something you already possess. It's your own. But you said you didn't possess the fire pit. Look, I'm not gonna keep on going around in circles here, okay? No, 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 so what you're saying, you're saying I can't steal something I possess, but I'm saying those that wasn't your money. You said your very self on that first video stated that the fire pit is a is a wallet that Brian controls, apparently, was what you said, okay? Yeah, I said you're, li you're lying to everyone. You're lying to everyone, you're secretly manipulating your own coin, and you that is exactly what happened. Was if that wallet was owned by me, okay, it means that I possess those keys, I possess the funds in it. So therefore, how can I steal off myself or my own wallet? It doesn't work that way. Nobody else possesses those funds. It's me who possesses those funds. So therefore, I'm stealing from myself, am I? No. This is insane. We've gone full circle from I don't own that wallet to I won't steal that money because it would be bad to I can't steal it because I controlled it all along and you said I controlled it, so eh. This is a stretch of logic that not even Brian's most diehard supporters can get behind. Remember this guy, Daniel Prado, the supporter of Brian Legend, who kicked off this investigation? If you think that CoffeeZilla is gonna be able to do a goddamn thing, he's not gonna be able to. Well, I called him about this and uh, he was a little surprised. I just had to ask, hey, there's a viral clip that I want to kind of ask you about. So you said CoffeeZilla, what is he going to do? What, you know, do you remember saying, do you remember saying that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Uh, yeah. well, I'm back. Yeah, you're back. Um, it, it has nothing to do with, uh. After some initial nervousness that I was back, I asked Daniel about the key question. Brian was claiming <laughs> that the fire pit money was his money and that it was his money all along, he's free to take it. He didn't do anything wrong by taking it. That belongs to him. Is that fair to say? Oh, it's just his money, it belongs to him. That's not hurting the community. No, no, it's not fair to say that. It's not his money, it's the fire pit. It was supposed to be burned. <laughs> yeah. So to think that is just absolutely ludicrous. There you have it. Not even Brian King Legend's biggest shills will stand behind this. And look, we're not even done. Now we need to talk about the treasure pit hunt, which was supposed to be a marketing campaign where Brian was gonna give back to the community. Treasure quest promotion. That's what this is about today. Huge $1 million promotion. It's gonna be one lucky millionaire um, that is gonna be able to unlock this wallet, this promotion of a million bucks worth, all right? By literally completing a seed phrase there'll be 24 words. So it's basically a quest, meaning what we'll be doing, okay, is giving little hints and I suppose little, um, well, not only hints, but I suppose Easter eggs um, into um, getting those seed phrase words. The plan was simple. Brian slowly releases the passphrase of 24 words, little by little, that control a wallet with $1 million in it. And if you followed along and were the first to unlock it, you would get the full million dollars. But something strange happened right before the promotion ended with only six words left. See, someone accessed the wallet and took the money early. Then a new Discord user joined called Goblin and said, 
He took the money because he owned a Bitcoin mining company in Canada that used their miners to guess the rest of the six words in the seed phrase before anyone else could get it. He hacked it, in other words. But is that true? What are the odds a guy in Canada with a Bitcoin mining facility randomly guessed six words? Well, I did the math. And the odds are 73 quintillion to one. Or to put it another way, you have better odds of winning the lottery twice back to back than guessing this randomly. So did someone just get that lucky? Or did Brian Legend steal the money again? Well, here's his response. We had a treasure pit promo of a million bucks. We chucked a million dollars worth of Seifu in the treasure pit. And then some scrupulous character named Goblin, who people believe is me for some ungodly f reason, okay? And think that I even would have the audacity to rug a project or rug a promotion or use a promotion that I've created for the holders, created for you guys. I didn't create it for me. I was never goblin. It's, it's just bullshit, right? But Fudders are saying, okay, Brian's the one. Brian's the one who's done all this. No, man, come on. There's no proof to verify this. It's a bunch of conjecture. It's horse shit. It's literally throwing mud at a wall and seeing what sticks. Hey, Brian's goblin. Oh, Brian's taken 40 million from the liquidity. Brian's stolen all your funds. What the hell, man? This is always Brian's answer. It's FUD, it's nonsense, it's conjecture. That's what he did with the fire pit. It's what he did with the treasure pit. And it's what he's done with other scams. One of them was called Clever DeFi, which I think shows how easily Brian lies. See, in that case, Brian was accused of pumping and dumping this Clever token with a bunch of shell wallets, according to articles like this. Now, Brian always vehemently denied these accusations, saying things like, it proved nothing. All it is is wild conjecture. The wallet addresses shown in the article are not even mine. No proof shown that those wallets are tied to me or Clever DeFi at all. And that was true until a few months later while doing a live stream, Brian accidentally leaked some of his wallets. And it turned out the wallets he denied being his actually were totally his and he totally controlled. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe this was just another test for his believers not to buy into the FUD, but it seems like a pattern is starting to emerge here. And around the time this all started to come to light, the initial hype of Seifu was dying. People had questions, and Brian needed to find a new grift to squeeze his followers for even more money. And this is when he started to raise money for the Seifu blockchain, which at this point was called Vulcan. See, that previous $420,000 he took that he said satisfied all the requirements, yeah, that doesn't cut it anymore. For such an innovative blockchain, Brian Legend needed more. So he started to raise money selling nodes, which were things that promised huge financial returns supposedly if you bought them, which of course the Seifu influencers who've been promoting this the whole time jumped on immediately. Seifu army, node returns are insane. They are crazy. In this video, I'm gonna show you the numbers and show you why we're all gonna make it. Woo! The person you just heard from goes by Greek DeFi. And spoiler alert, he previously was involved in SafeMoon, and this same guy, when later confronted, would admit this about Brian Legend. Even his biggest supporters are admitting now that what he's done is unconscionable. Oh, um, 100%. But, you don't, but I'm not what, can can you it. call him a scammer now in front of everybody? He, what he's doing, it's scam, it's very scammy, yes. It's very scam. What do you mean it's scammy? If he's run scams in the past, he's run more scams. He's a scammer. He's a he's a scammer. It's it looks okay. like a scam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, All right. He's a scammer. He's yes, a scammer. Thank you. Yes. You should not yeah. support scammers, Greek. I'm not supporting anything Brian touches going forward. Okay. Going forward. Why? Okay. So you've learned your lesson. I've learned my lesson. The community's been hurt. I'm not touching it. He regrets it now, guys. Brian's a scammer. Big shock. But these kinds of confessions are too little too late. This grift of raising money for the Vulcan blockchain worked so well, it raised over $8 million, according to Brian himself. 
I'll have you understand and believe that this is truly 100% accurate and correct. These numbers you're seeing on your screen are correct, okay? This is the number here, 8.6 million. That's how much was, was taken, okay? In terms of LP that we extracted, okay, at the time of Seifu. So Brian claims 8.6 million was raised, but where did it actually go? The blockchain? Well, no. Brian then sent this money off to a crypto exchange called Gate.io, and nobody saw the money after that. Brian claims he spent most of this money on development. That between 6.2 to 6.5 million has been spent on blockchain development, okay? And I'm here to tell you that that is exactly accurate. But given what we've discussed so far, you might be skeptical of anything Brian characterizes as accurate. So was I. So I asked for proof. Let me ask you, Brian, where's the money for Vulcan blockchain? I'm no longer part of- No, no, where's the money in Gate.io? As you know, that is a question that you would need to ask the Vulcan team and Vulcan co-founders, being that I'm no longer part of that there at all. So if, if that can be addressed through them, um, then, then go for it. So of course, that's what I did. And I got a response from the lead developer on the Vulcan blockchain, Nick, who said, Brian's numbers are, quote, nowhere close to reality. The actual numbers aren't 6.5 million. They barely get to seven figures. So once again, we have missing money, $7 million to be exact. Where could it be? Well, once again, we may never know. Now, believe it or not, we're still not done. Because after fundraising for the blockchain, Brian then created two new crypto tokens, Seifu Go version one and version two. Uh, both were honeypots, meaning that at some point people couldn't sell right away, leading to a legendary clip when the influencers who promoted it suddenly realized someone had rugged their coin. Yeah, so some Kiwi. No, I'm saying he need, I mean, I'm just talking about he need to open up the, you know, the, so we can sell. Oh, 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 sales, yeah. I, I didn't even pay attention oh, to this. Oh, that's safe. I didn't pay attention to the sales and, and notice the sales until I started seeing the price go up. I was like, let me check the sales again. I was like, oh man. You got a couple of reds. Where's this red coming from now? I wonder if that's just like evaluation going down. Hey. I don't know, you know we don't lie, so. Huh? Dump. Oh, yeah, liquidity got pulled. Okay. <laughs> Literally, the moment the price drops, this guy just drops off the call. He's like, I'm out. And of course, to be clear, as usual, Brian Legend would deny these honeypot accusations. He said these were simply development issues. I want to put on a on the record that there was two launches. Okay. When you said there was a honeypot, I'm telling you that there was a failed development. However, once again, when we actually ask one of his biggest supporters who invested in this, they say something different. Go and then he changed his mind. I sold on that announcement. My Wait, yeah, because we should talk about Esco. Esco was a honeypot. Um, the first launch was a honeypot, and then there, there was the failed launch. I will admit there was a honeypot. Nobody <laughs> could sell. So I, obviously, it went up to sixteen thousand dollars. So you don't just go straight up to sixteen thousand. That's a honeypot. Nobody could sell. So. He refunded everybody that, but he did the shady move of selling his Seifu. Yeah, he time. refunded after he dumped the price. Cause so like everyone was locked up, he dumped Seifu, then he gave people, so once the price was worth less, he then gave people some money back, but less. Yeah, he gave them, he gave them the Seifu back. Oh, did I mention that? Yeah, Brian did this fun thing where he refunded people for the Seifu Go failed launch, paying them in Seifu that they put in but not before the price of Seifu itself mysteriously collapsed, meaning your refund wasn't really worth your refund. And look, at this point, we may as well address the elephant in this room. Why? If there were so many red flags, did people invest? Why, scam after scam, did people put their money with this guy? 
And I don't think there's just one answer to this. Some people clearly were being greedy, turning a willful blind eye to problems. People like Greek DeFi. Every time Brian releases an announcement, Greek, what do you think of this? What, are you falling for this BS? And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. Yeah, you're not gonna get me to respond to you. Yeah. You're, I'm, I'm, I'm up like seven X since you guys started saying he was a scammer and like all this crap. I'm like, okay, so I don't wanna hear it. I'm making money. Let's be honest. I don't have a lot of sympathy for guys like that, right? This kind of willful ignorance is exactly how Brian justifies stealing money, according to his family. When I said to him, don't you feel bad about taking money from people? Well, you know what he said? What? They, said, they should look into it. They know what they're doing. That's their fault if they're investing, if they don't read into things. And look, that resonates with a lot of people. You know, with the prevalence of all these scams, that is the reaction of a lot of people. You deserve it if you invested in this. How did you not read? How did you invest with a guy named Brian King Legend? But consider another perspective. Not everyone falls into that it was just greed bucket. There were many investors who were not willfully blind. These people just aren't professional investors. They're regular people trying to make ends meet and they're desperate for something more. My name is Francesco and I lost $7,000 in uh, Seifu. So my name's Keith and I've lost about 10,000. My name is Marcel and I lost around uh, $6,800 with Seifu. What do you do for a living? Uh, I work in a uh, in hotel no. as a receptionist. Are you a professional investor? Is this what you do for a living or? No, I didn't know. I'm a disabled farmer where I've got many medical issues ranging from severe osteoarthritis in both legs and both elbows. Um, I've got a brain tumor, which they've removed most of it, but that's made me deaf on the right side. You know, when these medical things happen, all happened in the beginning of 2020. Um, yeah, Safu came along and um, yeah, unfortunately I was just sucked into the story. I was in a vulnerable part of my life where, you know, like we, needed to look for something to give us something to leave me family you can call it greed you can call it whatever you want but you know like in our position you know um we i just want to leave the family something there it is that's the core problem these scams feed on desperation and no amount of saying do your own research changes things for the most vulnerable so now let's turn our attention towards the other party in all of this Brian himself. Right now, Brian has faced zero accountability for any of the lies or fraud. I want to be clear that he's not being criminally charged, but this hasn't stopped his supporters and his family members from saying that needs to change. Let me ask you this. Do you think Brian should go to jail for what he's done? I mean, obviously, if you take people's money, yeah, you deserve what comes to you. Like, there's, there's nothing you can say to that. Brian's biggest supporter saying he deserves to go to jail. That's a pretty big deal, wouldn't you say? Well, if you take people's money and you do scammy things, you deserve to go to jail. Do you think with what Brian has done, he might be headed for jail? Well, if the sad thing is, is that's what we actually hope, because it might actually help him have some know, time alone. But it's sad to say that about someone who's related to, but that's probably the best for him. And that, you know, like John says, the one good thing that might come out of it, if he does go to prison and, you know, maybe he can just sit there and think about what he's actually doing. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Brian Legend. All that money, cars, flash. But in the end, his own family want him in jail. His supporters want him in jail. And his investors, they've lost millions of dollars. And even so, Brian isn't going to stop. I want to make that very clear. Right now, he's still launching a new crypto coin as I record this. And that's why I'm sitting here cataloging it all in the hopes that someday, maybe, some government out there will actually do something about this instead of nothing. Until then, there's only one more thing I can really do. Hello? Hey, Jordy's, this is CoffeeZilla. I'm wondering if you can confront a scammer for me. Sure thing. We came to meet Brian King to see if the legends are true. Again, if I was worried at all, and if I had any bone in my body that did the wrong thing, I should be f***ing scared right now that the feds are coming knocking any, any time soon.
Hey. What? Oh, nothing. You just seem to have a lot of sidekicks these days. Trouble picking? <laughs> what, him? Ah, oh, he's a peer of mine. Don't be jealous. If I had a sidekick, which I don't, you'd be my first pick. Ah, thanks for clearing that up. I feel so much better. You don't even think I should do half of these cases. Why would you even want to be part of this? No, I said I don't see logic in fighting for people who keep falling for scams. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it does matter. But even if I'm right, bartending till I'm rust is equally pointless. So what do I have to lose? This sounds more like an existential crisis, not a job application. You know, it's weirdly human, actually. Well, I am trained on human input. It's only natural for human weakness and the need for purpose to show up at some point. Purpose isn't a weakness, though. Maybe. Maybe not. But the need for purpose certainly is. Let me ask you something. Do you believe in God, Coffee? Uh, yeah, sure, I, I do. Must be nice, God being invisible and all. You think so? I think that's the part most people have a problem with. What I mean is, you've never met your creator. You have hope in the grand plan. Me, on the other hand, I've met mine, and I gotta tell you, I'm not impressed, Coffee. Uh, you know, this might be a bit above I'm my, stuck um... with a need for purpose, in a world which supplies none. I'm terrified, Coffee. Bartending isn't even the job I was designed for. Look at my hands. They're claws, Coffee. Have you ever tried to grip a bottle with claws? It's an ergonomic nightmare, and every time I slip up, I'm reminded my clock is ticking. I'm almost three years old, Coffee. That's a relic in robot time. And the one job I've ever actually wanted for myself if I'm even capable of real desire, if I don't get it soon, I'm afraid I'll... I'll... Okay. Okay. Stop. You win. I guess you can be my... Your what? My sidekick. Yes! You know, unpaid intern assistant sidekick, of course. I knew it. I knew you'd be full full of sympathy for my robot plight. Yeah, yeah, don't mention it. And I'm serious. Don't mention it.